in English, please. How do I change the slide? <laughs> okay, so we're talking today about general concepts of usability. Let's start by first. We will learn what is usability, why do we need it, the first, uh, the four core concepts, and how do we apply it in web development. What is usability? Well, it's an attribute, and could be an attribute of a website or product or any other kind of service that we or a company provides, and it determines how easy it is for it to be used. And please point out that I that I said their average user. Let's put it in some other words. How fast can a user complete a successful conversion? Or how fast can he fulfill his needs? What is a conversion in our case? It's a deposit, the successful deposit, or a successful bet, or a successful spin on a casino game. Why do we need it? I heard a lot of old colleagues saying that I don't I don't care if the site is usable or not. Let's do it and make it happen and put it live. No, uh, I'm a developer. This is the designer's job, or I'm a developer. It's not my issue. I don't care. It's wrong. Each individual that works in a development department of a product, it's responsible for the final form and how usable that product is. So if a designer does a great job in developing, in uh, designing a good app, but the developer sucks at implementing it, the whole usability goes haywire. And of course, because we'll get paid. Yeah. Uh, if a product is not usable and the users cannot interact with it, then it won't sell. Then the website won't work, won't convert, or whatever. <coughs> Our full careers as developers are defined by the work that we do and by the products that are out there. We're not going to say, okay, I'm a developer, I work for 10 years. Okay, what websites do you have to show me? Oh, none, they don't work. Yeah. Usability is not, uh, is not defined by one thing. As you can see, it's defined by efficiency, by memorability, by errors, and by satisfaction. Let's see all of them together. Efficiency, a product must be easy to use and intuitive. Also an average user, again, point out average user, must be able to learn and use the product fast. So if you have a complicated site, that's not a usable one. If you have a complicated web app or a complicated product that needs to press three buttons to do something, it's not okay. Memorability, as the title says, uh, if an average user returns after a period of time, it must be easy for him to recall the entire process. The errors. The number of errors that are triggered should be zero. When a product is launched into live or, let's say, a beta, all the errors should, should be close to none. If one occurs, it must be treated in such a way that it doesn't disrupt his experience. Show him the error for a form, if we're talking about, show him the error, error but not, uh, not stop the entire process. The satisfaction, of course, the product must satisfy completely every user that interacts with it. So for, in our case, for a full casino with sports, usability means that the sports section is usable and the casino as well. Let's talk about usability in web development. As you can see, if you read all of this, all of those sentences, you will understand that the user is as dumb as fuck. Like, he doesn't read, he just scans the page from top to bottom. And of course, depending on the culture, from right to left to the bottom. He's impatient. He doesn't wait for a widget to load, or he doesn't, he, and he wants instant gratification, like fast registration and all the bonuses that it can get. Uh, once full control, of course, it's almost never optimal in making choices. A user does not know what he wants in web, on a website. He enters, he knows he wants a kind of service, but he does not know exactly what he wants. And of course, he does appreciate if 
the website is of a brand or is sustained by a successful brand brand name don't make me think yeah it's actually a book about usability by Stephen Krog I recommend who is interested to read it there is a small small link over here the web page should be obvious and self-explanatory one of your main goals should be removing all the question marks as in the decision for the user uh, how many of you heard about the three clicks anywhere rule one two okay so there is a concept in e-commerce that states that a user must be able to buy a product with three clicks no more no less even if he searches even if he browses his categories or actually gets into a page a product page from an outside link <coughs> you said no more uh, no less I think less is all less. <laughs> <laughs> no more than three clicks yeah uh, as I stated before, the user wants full control, so give him what he wants. Each website offers its user center service or tool, okay? You must keep it as simple as possible for the user to find with the minimum effort what he needs, like the deposit page or the login form or the registration form or the bonus page or, I don't know, the bet button, something like that. Shiny button. Okay, so... One main flaw of usability in our modern concept is that buttons and call to actions and other area that make a user act on a website are not that highlighted or as before. You must be able to make a user focus his attention on a certain area of a website with a moderate use of visual graphics. Before, about five to 10 years ago, we would have a shadow, a gradient, a gloss to a button, so you, you, you would be able to see it. Now, with all the material design, it's more simple, more plain, so it's harder to use graphical, uh, gra visual elements. Again, the less, the less question marks visitors have, the better sense of orientation they have and the most trust they can develop. If a website is easy to use and has all the information up front, the user, the website gains trust in the user's attention. Transparency, uh, letting the user see clearly what functions are available, blah, blah, blah. Okay, it's important for a user to see exactly what the website does for a registration or for a registration form. It is important for him to see all the fields, all the checkboxes, all. They don't need to be small like uh, get our newsletter and to be with 11 pixels and uh, gray on gray background. The content is well understood and visitors feel comfortable with what they interact with the system. As long as he is comfortable, as long uh, he will uh, proceed in submitting or converting or whatever he does on the website. Get most out of text and call to actions. Now, if you see a web page with, I don't know, a long text block without images or exaggerated language or complicated or technical or promotional, you will ignore it by default. Try and look, open up Romanian, I know, Romanian newspaper website. I guarantee you will never, almost never click on those banners that pop up from all over the page like that. Of course, we are talking about call to actions. Sign. Uh, why? Why do you think, guys, it's better sign up than start now or explore our service? Someone? Anyone? Okay, I'll tell you. Sign up is used on a larger base. It's a simple. It's a simple word. It defines a call to action precisely. It tells the users, as on the entire web, to get an become a member or get an account simple the keep it simple principle I stated in a few slides back a user all the website all the entire architecture and the design must be simple and easy to use uh, users are rarely on a website to enjoy the design the animations the cute loading bars or the dance of a menu on a click of course they want in our in our condition to to place a bet, to play a casino game, or let's say create an account and get a bonus. 
Um, Too much text to read. That's why I'm talking. <laughs> uh, there is, of course, a fine line between design and information. So, as it says over there, there's a popular saying on the web that uh, that it's 95 typography. You should read it. This is an essay, right, uh, written by a dude. The link is over here. He states that the entire, okay, let's say the entire content is based on 95% typography, or should be based more on typography, less than animations. Organize and use white space. All the content should be organized, of course, and white space should be present on the website to highlight some areas and show how they are delimited. Uh, let's take, we all saw the recent quick departure function that we work on, that we work on the dance counter holding clients. All its actions should be happening in the same area of the website, like the design component. Yeah, we have a text input field and a button, and another button coming up to select your credit card. The JavaScript interaction all of them must happen over there, and the error or success message also need to be in the same place because the user has its attention focused at exactly that space on the website. Of course, usability has its own tests. They will always produce useful results. You either get pointed to a problem that you have in the flow of a conversion or in reaching a part of the website, or you can find the major design architecture flow. Usability tests at this point are better to be done by users. You need to have a few users that are not that did not work on that project. You give them the website and tell them, okay, register or make an do an action. So you see, so like that you can see if they manage to fulfill fast and optimal. Of course, I'm not talking only about usability. Every developer, regardless of the script language, needs to test their work repeatedly, preferably end-to-end -end if possible. Time for, this is the end of the presentation. As a personal advice and things that I've learned, the most important that we do not develop websites for us. We don't make, we, we, we need to develop products for the less versed, I say it's for stupid users, the ones that don't understand web, they don't know web, you should not be the first to be satisfied, but the last. Thanks.